next here among the congruence relation if a is congruent to b moduli n and g reverse to n where d is greater than 0 then show that a is congruent to b modul t so what is given a is congruent to b modul n so what is the meaning of a is congruent to b modul n that n divides to a minus b what do we have n divides to a minus b and therefore a minus b expressed in the form n into some integer so this is our assumption that a is congruent to b modul n this is given so what is its meaning that a is congruent to b modul n means n divides to a minus b means a minus b expressed in the form n into some integer so this is given and what we have to show we have to show a is congruent to b modul d so when a is congruent to b modul d if d divides to a minus b that is a minus b expressed in the form d into some integer so here also we are given d divides to n d divides to n d is greater than 0 and d divides to n therefore what we have n is equal to d into some integer so let it uh, be k1 k1 is the integer notation for this integer d divides to n by, by using definition of divisibility what we have n is equal to d into some integer k1 is uh, suppose uh, the notation for integer that integer and so that we have to show a is congruent to b modulo d when a is congruent to b modulo d if a minus b express in the form d into some integer so consider a minus b and then try to express it is in the form d into some integer so but uh, a minus b is n into k and this n is what d k1 substitute n as d k1 and that were, therefore what we have a minus b is equal to d into write this k1 into k2 as in one bracket and this is integer because k1 is integer k is integer and the multiplication of two integer is integer and therefore a minus b express in the form d into some integer this implies d divides to a minus b and therefore a is congruent to b modulo d so this is the proof of the theorem number a then theorem number b uh, all these theorems are separated theorems well, what is theorem number b that ax is congruent to bx modulo here and greatest common denominator of x and n is 1 then prove that a is congruent to b modulo d and is called cancellation law that is the cancel x but when we cancel x if x greatest common denominator of x and n is 1 so this is given so what is given ax is congruent to bx modulo here implies what n divides to ax minus b by using definition of congruence relation and therefore a minus bx is expressed in the form n into some integer uh, that integer is uh, suppose k then uh, also we are given what the greatest common denominator of x and n is 1 so n divides to ax minus bx implies n divides to uh, uh, take this uh, x as common ax minus bx is equal to nk so x as common and therefore what we have n divides to a minus because this a minus b x express in the form n into some integer therefore n divides to a minus b x or take here x as common and therefore n divides to a minus b into x therefore n divides to one of them by using the uh, previous theorem but the greatest common denominator of n and x is one the corollary on the Euclid's lemma what is the corollary on the Euclid's lemma the greatest common denominator of n and x is 1 and n divides to a minus b into x implies n divides to a minus n, n divides to suppose n divides to suppose x into y then either n divides to x or n divides to y but uh, if the greatest common denominator of n and x is 1 therefore n divides to a minus b so this is the corollary on the Euclid's lemma that is if a divides to b into c and if the greatest common denominator of a and b is 1 then n divides to c uh, a divides to c so see that corollary on the Euclid's lemma so by using corollary on that Euclid's lemma n divides to multiplication of these two means n divides to one of them and so n divides to a minus b because the greatest common divisor of x and n is 1 or n and x is 1 this is given so yet n divides to a minus b and therefore because n does not divide to x because the greatest common denominator of n and a x is 1 and therefore a is congruent to b modulo n we have this a is congruent to b modulo n and it's called, called cancellation law then theorem number c that the greatest common denominator of x and n is d and ax is congruent to bx modulo n this is given and we have to show 
A is congruent to B module W, where E N is what? D W. So the greatest common divisor of X and N is D. That is a round bracket. X comma N means greatest common divisor of X and N is D. Means D divides to both. D is common divisor. So the first meaning of the first that X, the greatest common divisor of X and N is D. Means D divides to X as well as D divides to N. And D divides to X means X express in the form D into some integer. And D divides to N means N express in the form of D into some integer. But this integer is here is we take K one, but here is the notation W is given in the theorem that D N is equal to D W. So use that W notation. So N divides to here is we have N D divides to X as well as D divides to N because D is the greatest common divisor of X and N. And by using definition of greatest common divisor, D divides to both. D divides to X implies X express in the form D into K1, some integer. And D divides to N implies N is equal to D into some integer. And that integer is given in the theorem W. So, and obviously the greatest common divisor of uh, this K1 and W is 1. Otherwise, uh, D is not greatest common divisor of X and N. Then we have to show we are also given in the theorem that ax is congruent to bx model n implies n divides to ax minus bx and then n divides to a minus b take this x as common and then a minus bx express in the form n into some integer so uh, z is the integer notation for that integer so why why n divides to a minus b into x means a minus b into x express in the form n into some integer so let z be the that integer then uh, a, uh, substitute x as this value dk1 substitute uh, this uh, n value of n as dw so we have this equation and cancel this d we have the a minus b k1 is equal to w z z is integer and this means a minus b into k1 express in the form w into some integer means w divides to a minus b into k1 but the greatest common other w and k1 is 1 and therefore w divides to a minus b by using the corollary on the Euclid's lemma that W divides to this both uh, multiplication of these two and then W divides to one of them but W greatest common divisor of W and K1 is one therefore W divides to A minus B and therefore A is congruent to B module W because the greatest common divisor of W and K1 is one and therefore we have A is congruent to B module W because W divides to A minus B. Then next theorem that if N is greater than one we fix and a, b, c, d are arbitrary integers, then the, through the following property that a is congruent to b module n, then a plus c is congruent to b plus d, and a, c is congruent to b, c module n. And a is congruent to b module n, then a raised to k is congruent to b raised to k module <coughs> n. So first the proof of the first uh, uh, theorem, this theorem number 5, it is generated by number 5. So what is given? a is congruent to b module n. And therefore what do we have? n divides to a minus b and therefore <coughs> n divides to a minus b so we have a minus b is equal to n into some integer right either this proof or the another proof is what add c subtract c and then what we have n divides to a plus c minus take this minus sign common b plus d and this implies a plus c is congruent to b plus c module n because n divides to this okay uh, so just add c subtract c and then take this minus sign common so n divides to a plus c minus b plus d and therefore a plus c is congruent to b plus d module here this is the one way of the proof uh, the another method is what we have to show uh, what is given a plus uh, a is congruent to b module here. so what is the meaning that n divides to a minus b and therefore a minus b expressed in the form n into k for some integer k then consider a plus uh, c minus b plus d in bracket a plus c minus b plus c and then what do we have it is a plus c minus b minus c that's minus c minus c get cancelled and then for a minus b and it is equal to n k1 and therefore n divides to a plus c minus b plus d so the proof another format of the proof here similarly consider a c minus b c and express it in the form n into some integer so a c minus b c is what a minus b into c and then a minus b is what is n k1 and then what do we have n k1 c and therefore n divides to a minus a c minus b c and therefore 
AC is common to BC modulier. So I write this group that E n divides to A minus B, and then write the proof, the proof of the this AC is congruent to BC modulier. That E n divides to A minus B, therefore E n divides to C into A minus B. That is E n divides to AC minus because uh, if E n divides to uh, X, then E n divides to C X. It's multiples, and then therefore AC is congruent to BC modulier. So either write this proof or this proof. That I assume that A is congruent to B modulier. Write it mean that A n divides to A minus B. A minus B is equal to N K. And then consider A plus C minus B plus C, and uh, express it in the form N into some integer. And so consider A C minus B C, and express it in the form A into some. That is this. The, this is the method. This method. The proof of the the theorem is given by this method. Another method. Or the give method given here. Then uh, we have to show is congruent to B modulo n. Then A raised to k is congruent to B raised to k for some uh, modulo n for some positive integer k. So n divides to a minus b implies n divides to a minus b into this bracket. Because uh, if n divides to x, then n divides to uh, any number any uh, integer into x. So that integer is what? Suppose this is a raised to k minus one plus a raised to k minus two into b plus a k raised to minus two a b raised to k minus two plus b raised to k minus one. That, that is adjust this bracket and the multiplication of these two bracket is a raised to k minus b raised to k. Multiplication of these two bracket and therefore n divides to a raised to k minus b raised to k and therefore a raised to k is congruent to b raised to k modulo n. So this is true. That is, if a is congruent to b modulo n, then a square is congruent to b square modulo n, a cube is congruent to b cube modulo n, and so on. So, the next theorem uh, is important as far as the exam concerned. That let a and b be any two integers, and n is a natural number. That is obviously a value of n is one, two, three, four, five. And then prove that a is congruent to b if and only if a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n. So this is the theorem of type if and only if, and we know that if p if and only if q is logically equivalent to p implies q and q implies p. That is the proof of the theorems of the type if and only if is in the two parts. So in part one, assume uh, p prove q, and in the part two, assume q and prove p. So what is the p statement here? A is congruent to b modulo n is the p statement. And what is the Q statement? A and B leave the same remainder when divided by n. That is why to show P if and only Q. So assume P. So in part one, assume P. Suppose that A is congruent to B modulo n. And what we have to show? We have to show A and B leave the same remainder when divided by n. So A is congruent to B modulo n. What we have? Now we have to show A and B leave the same remainder when divided by n. So, what is the meaning of a is congruent to b modulo n? Implies n divides to a minus b, and n divides to a minus b means a minus b expressed in the form n into some integer. Suppose that k is the, that integer. That therefore we have a is equal to b plus n k. So this minus b. Then I apply division algorithm to b and n. That is divide b by n. We have some quotient q. We have some remainder. Okay, this is the division algorithm. That is there exists q and r such that. B is equal to n q plus r because if we apply the division algorithm to B and n, that is divide B by n, we have some quotient, we have some remainder that that are q and r. Then therefore B is equal to n q plus r. Now obviously this remainder is what strictly less than the divisor and greater than equal to zero. This is the division algorithm. <coughs> that is r is the remainder when B is divided by n. This meaning of this B is equal to n q plus r means r is the remainder when B is divided by n. Now substitute this uh, value of b in this equation, equation number one. So what we have a is equal to uh, value of b is n q plus r in uh, plus n k. Then take this n as common. We have in bracket q plus k plus r, where r is strictly less than n greater than equal to zero. Therefore a is equal to this. And what is the meaning of this equation? A is equal to n q plus k plus r. That if we divide a by n, then q plus k is the quotient. And R is the remainder. So just we have what we have from this equation that R is the remainder when A is divided by N. 
so here is the this equation implies r is the remainder when b is divided by n and this equation implies r is the remainder when a is divided by n and means a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n so this is the proof of the part 1 that assume p and prove q that a and b what is our assumption in the part a part 1 that a is congruent to b modulus and what we have to show a and b leave the same remainder divided by n so we have r is the remainder when b is divided by n and here we have the r is the remainder when a is divided by n that means a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n this is the part 1 then in part 2 assume that a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n and what do i have to show now we have to show a is congruent to b modulus in part 2 so assumption is what suppose a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n and what do i have to show a is congruent to b modulus so what do we have that the meaning of this statement is what a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n that is a is equal to n q plus r and b is equal to n q dash plus r means what what is the indication of these two statements that a is equal to n q plus r means q is the quotient if a is divided by n and r is the remainder and what is b is equal to n q dash plus r means what if we divide b by n then q dash is the quotient and r is the remainder why in both uh, r is re remainder is r because a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n so by using this statement what we have if we divide a by n we have the remainder r if we divide b by n then we have also remainder r but we know we know that what are the quotients q and q dash these are the two notations either use q and q dash or q1 and q2 but the remainder are same and so use the r and r so r is obviously strictly less than divisor n and greater than equal to 0 <coughs> and then a minus b we have to show a is congruent to b modulus in part 2 what we have to show a is congruent to b modulus so when a is congruent to b modulus if n divides to a minus b so consider a minus b when 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 n divides to a minus b if a minus b express in the form n into some integer so consider a minus b is equal to substitute a as n q plus r minus uh, n q dash plus r and then r and minus r become zero so what do we have n in bracket q minus q dash and this q minus q dash is integer therefore a minus b express in the form n into some integer and therefore n divides to a minus b and therefore a is congruent to b modulus so this is the part second and uh, proof of the part second that is the proof of the theorem of the type if and only if is in the two part the first part is assume p prove q and in second part assume q and prove p so in the next lecture we will see the definition of residue class module and some examples on that <clears throat>